think of a Volkswagen Polo with a more adventurous image, a slightly larger cabin and a more flexible interior. You're picturing this car, Volkswagen's smallest SUV, the T-Cross. It's trendy, quite sophisticated and very acceptably efficient thanks to its 1 litre TSI petrol and 1.6 TDI diesel engine options. And you can make it very much your own. What's not to like? This is a little crossover perfectly suited for driving in the real world. From the moment you start off down the road in one, you instantly feel comfortable with the way it feels and responds. Uh, there is nothing particularly interesting about the drive dynamics being delivered here, but all the control weights are nicely matched, uh, the clutch engages smoothly, the throttle response is linear, uh, the brakes inspire confidence, and the steering is light and precise, even if it offers relatively little in the way of actual feedback. Uh, during fast, tight cornering, uh, having a slightly higher centre of gravity than you'd get in a Polo uh, is, of course, noticeable. But even then, the T-Cross doesn't lurch about and it feels relatively agile. And for the rest of the time, uh, you'll simply enjoy the fact that the slightly higher set driving position gives you a useful improvement in all-round visibility. So it's good around town and equally good out on the highway, helped by a class-leadingly supple quality of ride and standards of drive refinement that are difficult to better in this class. Uh, this car is better suited to longer trips than any other rival. But the T-Cross is at heart, as Volkswagen keeps telling us, an urban crossover. It certainly isn't intended for much use away from a paved surface, although light field tracks and muddy car parts will be slightly easier to tackle than they would be in that Polo. Engine-wise, almost all buyers will choose the 1.0-litre TSI turbo petrol unit we're trying here, available with either 95 PS and a 5-speed manual gearbox, or, as in this case, with 115 PS and a choice of either 6-speed manual transmission or a 7-speed DSG automatic. With the stick shift, uh, up to 47.9 mpg is possible on the WLTP rated combined cycle and 112 grams per kilometre of any DC rated CO2. Volkswagen does offer a minority interest 1.6 litre TDI diesel option with 95 PS. Uh, that's variants available with either 5-speed manual transmission or the 7-speed DSG auto. If you want a compact, affordable Volkswagen SUV, but you find the brand's golf-based T-Rock model a bit too fashion conscious, then this Polo-based T-Cross will probably be right up your street. Despite the fact that it sits on an MQB A0 platform, supposedly designed for super minis, it's actually not much smaller than a T-Rock in overall size, and it has a boxier, more conventional shape that ought to make it a touch more practical inside. Okay, let's take a seat at the wheel. You sit quite commandingly by the standards of this class of car and it's easy to find a comfortable driving position thanks to loads of wheel and seat adjustment. Uh, you might wish that Volkswagen had taken a slightly more extrovert approach to cabin design here. It's well built and ergonomically almost faultless, but it's all a bit grey and dour. But help is at hand for fashionistas in the form of various optional design packs which add more fashionable finishes for the upholstery, the dashboard and the centre console. All models get this 8-inch center dash composition media infotainment screen which delivers all the usual informational telephone and entertainment options with assured cleverness. Uh, avoid entry level trim and you also get the Volkswagen Carnet app connect setup that you'll need for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. As an option on the mainstream models, Volkswagen also offers the 10.25 inch active info display screen we have here which replaces the usual conventional dial that you'd otherwise get in the instrument cluster. Uh, there's plenty of storage space too, including big door bins, under seat stowage, and this deep forward compartment ahead of the gear stick. Let's take a seat in the rear. Six foot adults who might normally grumble at the prospect of long distance rear seat confinement in any super mini based model need have no worries about the prospect of running in this one. We should also mention this car's party piece, its sliding rear bench, which is standard fit across the range. Uh, the seat base slides over a range of 14 centimetres, although in its uh, most forward position, legroom is virtually non-existent, unless the people in front were very short indeed. Um, when it's pushed all the way back though, there's vastly more legroom than you'd ever expect a car of this size would be able to provide. 
Finally, let's take a look at luggage space out back. Now you might hope that the tall shape would free up considerably more boot capacity than you get in a polo. Well, that depends on the position of that sliding rear bench. If it's pushed all the way back as it is here, there's 385 liters of space, just 34 liters more than a polo, but easy enough for a buggy or a few large suitcases. If, however, you were to push the bench right forward, then capacity would rise to 455 liters, and that's 10 liters more than you'll get in Volkswagen's T-Roc SUV from the next class up. Now you will pay a little more for a T-Cross than you will for some obvious rivals, but what you get in return is a more considered product that restricts its frivolity to a few optional trim packages, but is at heart very much a traditional Volkswagen. Uh, you certainly have to be a committed follower of fashion to choose a T-Roc over one of these. It is at heart a very complete small SUV and very much a Volkswagen.